Okay. Greetings, everyone. Happy Mammary Day weekend. I'm sorry. Happy Memorial Day weekend, 2017. Um, let's see. Uh, yesterday, my sister took me. Well, she, she treated me because she invited me uh, to All You Can Eat Sushi at the Sushi Village in Little Falls, New Jersey. And uh, they, they got good ratings because the original one is in Westwood, New Jersey. Uh, the best ratings is a place called um, Arrigato in Edgewater, but she did not feel like driving all the way to the Hudson River because it's right on the Hudson River, Edgewater. So we went to Sushi Village in... Um, in Little Falls and I must say the quality of the sushi was outstanding the portions were generous they gave, they gave you a lot of fish in the center of the rolls excellent food um, unfortunately no liquor license so I, I could not order a, a, uh, a hot sake and, a, and an ice cold Kirin beer to wash it down I, it's bring your own booze I didn't know that. So, uh, but I was very happy. We stuffed ourselves. The quality was excellent. They were a little bit too rambunctious giving us the uh, the bill. Wow. Like they wanted us to uh, expedite the premises. I was a little, I get pissed when an all-you-can-eat establishment tries to get you out of there. I ignored it. I stood there even longer out of spite because when I go to an all-you-can-eat establishment, I pull a Homer Simpson on them. They don't make any money on James P. Madonna. Well, that's why they wanted you out of it. <laughs> well, because I was ordering, because uh, every serving of rolls is six. And every roll is like two to three times the size of your, of your average sushi roll. And, uh, oh, the seaweed salad was outstanding. It was sesame, it was, it was sesame flavored delicious you know how much nutrition is in one little bowl of seaweed salad one little bowl of wakame seaweed salad which once they marinate it doesn't taste like seaweed mm -hmm. it's probably more nutritious than a big Caesar salad and a side order of, of vegetables for your dinner I bet the, the nutritional density of that seaweed salad far surpasses your standard uh, jabroni American uh, side dish with, uh, want a burger. with salad. Even though romaine lettuce turned out to be very high in nutritional value, Reverend mm -hmm. Dr. William J. Eisman. Romaine lettuce and also your, your humble, low-priced, simple cabbage turns out to be, I think, second to watercress in nutritional value, nutritional density which is good news because I always loved cabbage and I love the price also and um, of course uh, the best cabbage would be fermented cabbage like sauerkraut uh, Koreans make Koreans make kimchi the fermented kimchi Excuse me. <clears throat> but anyway Chisler's Hall of Shame oh I forgot Second, seven lucky bells for progressive discussions. Memorial Day weekend, 2017. And uh, <clears throat> everything we discuss politically is part of our series, Crapitalism in a Conch Shell. Yes, King Neptune, you're right. All Americans care about on Memorial Day weekend is... Uh, um, is partying, you know, getting drunk or high, uh, uh, rushing, fighting bumper to bumper traffic to get down to the Jersey Shore, to rip mm -hmm. off Jersey Shore, where you have to pay for everything, you know. Yes, true, the tolls, the tolls, parking, paying to put your bathing suit on, uh, uh, expensive uh, price gouge food on the boardwalk, uh, paying to get on the beach. You, yes, that's true. You can't bring your uh, food or beverage on the beach anymore because uh, 
and, and which kind of leads up to my chiseless hall of shame it's it's related it's related it's it has to do with the attitude towards businesses the attitude today of businesses in America towards the consumer the contempt they have for the consumer and I'm going to give an example uh, but it's true you know and uh, they don't care about the true meaning of Memorial Day weekend which is a uh, uh, memorial in, in, in remembrance of the service men and women who uh, sacrificed their lives uh, it, it, during wartime yes but they don't know they don't think of that they just think of uh, another excuse to get drunk and puke yeah. Americans America America yes I'll talk to you I'll talk to you again All right bye that was King Neptune from the briny deep um, I have my uh, Japanese green tea matcha uh, sencha leaves with matcha very high in, in antioxidant and medicinal value I have also I added cinnamon and lemon juice cinnamon is number two uh, highest Oryx score, uh, second to cloves. Gary Noll insists that uh, cinnamon surpasses cloves, but all the internet data claims that cloves surpasses cinnamon, but you can't go wrong with either one. Uh, cinnamon is excellent for blood sugar uh, disorders, blood sugar stabilization. It works great with chromium. Mm -hmm. And uh, to you strength training uh, athletes out there, powerlifters, bodybuilders, the most anabolic hormone in the body is not testosterone, it's insulin. Mm. Oh, I was yeah. shocked to learn that. Okay, now, Chisler's Hall of Shame. Shame on you, Microsoft, Windows yeah. 10, you suck just as much as the douchebag face that sits on top of Bill Gates' shoulders, shoulders, the douchebag face Bill Gates. Well, this has to do, this is connected with what I said before to King Neptune, about the attitude of American businesses today. I, I, um, I boot up the, uh, my uh, jacked up, uh, my super jacked up uh, custom made computer, um, which I vacuumed for the first time ever, and I want to thank my uh, brother-in-law and uh, the Megalife, the official Megalife 21 uh, computer uh, hardware technician and software expert, Santa Tank is the is the st name that he goes by, who built the computer and and did it, made it so simple and user-friendly in terms of cleaning it it was only only two knob-like screws that I had to remove to pop the panel off the PC in order to get in there and vacuum and he he, he designed it so there's lots of airspace inside the case for the large fans to work efficiently you know more circulation you know, for a computer that has no com P no PC filters, no computer filter on it, mm -hmm. there was very little dust in there. I thought there was going, to, it was going to look like the Sahara Desert, you know, with like a like an inch of dust. No, there was hardly any dust. So I got in there, opened it up, vacuumed it, no problem at all, and. Um, and then screwed it back on. Now what happened was, the night before, my computer went dead. So I was very concerned. It wouldn't reboot. It wouldn't turn on. So I go, oh shit. Here we go. So I pulled the power cord out, and I called it a night. It was like in the later evening. And I said, you know what, let me just watch like a science channel, history channel. Let me just lie down and watch TV. And forget about late night being online late night pulled the power cord out next day I said decided to open it up so when I opened it up after I vacuumed I thought maybe there was 
too much dust in there, the, the computer overheated. I, I put the power cord back in, turned it on with no problem. Okay, it started with no problem at all. But prior to the computer going dead, Microsoft had a ton of updates. And as they were taking forever to update everything that they needed to update, and believe me, it took a long time because there was a shitload of things Microsoft was wanted to update oh on my Windows 10. As they were doing it, they were uh, giving me messages about how much better and, and how much more improved my Windows 10 experience was going to be and how happy I was going to be after all these updates were installed. All this corporate mumbo jumbo. All right, all right, come on, get to the point. All right, let's go. Uh, update. I, I don't want to hear. I don't want. I don't want. I don't want to uh, hear how wonderful Microsoft is and how much they care. Just update everything. So they update. I wait forever, and that's when the computer went kaput. You know, that's it. Boom. Okay. Then lo and behold, the next day, the updates are in. Guess what? Microsoft canceled out all of my default programs that I had pre-selected before as my defaults. Real tech, high definition audio was replaced by some Microsoft program. Everything, all my def defaults were, e were replaced without asking me by a Microsoft Windows 10 uh, alternative. In other words, they didn't ask me if I, if I wanted to keep my defaults. Mm -hmm. So I had to find, go into settings and find the correct page to restore all of my defaults. So what I'm trying to get at is the intrusiveness, the, uh, the obnoxious attitude of corporations today that force things on the consumer mm. without asking asking them permission how do they know I want all the Microsoft programs instead of my default programs they don't I don't want their program I want VLC as my media player I want my real tech high definition audio mm -hmm. uh, um, I don't use Microsoft I mean Windows Office. I use uh, LibreOffice. I use I don't use Adobe Photoshop. I use the GIMP, which is all free, free, free. And 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 my my sound system. The reason why I found out my defaults were were uh, terminated is my speakers didn't work. Uh -huh. That's that's what originally got me fired up. I I tested my speakers and. It says my speakers and um, webcam, microphone, in, which is built in a webcam. All the hardware is working properly. All of the drivers are up to date. But then it told me that my Realtek is not my default anymore. And then I went, aha, no wonder why my all my sound system is dead. That's when I realized that the Windows updates canceled out my personal defaults that I selected. Because uh -huh, they want you to Windows. That's it. But they don't ask the consumer, no, they don't. do you want, would you like micro, the Microsoft alternative to your default? Or do you want to keep your default? They don't ask you this. They obnoxiously push their product on you without asking permission uh -huh. and this attitude is not just reserved for Microsoft but all companies are are obnoxiously doing this pushing their, their shit on you uh -huh. um, um, uh, it's like even Verizon Fios when, when I when I turn the TV on they're throwing spam at me they want me to Oh, try this channel. Try yeah, this channel. Yeah, Get yeah, this channel. Yeah, Add board. this channel to your your cable package. Your um, channel guide. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, would you like to rent the movie? Uh, oh, it'll cost that. No, no. Just 
I turned the TV on <laughs> so I could I could change the channels and go to the channels I want to look at. I don't want all this damn spam. Right. I don't want all this this all this bombardment of shit that I have to pay for. Mm. So what I'm trying to say is they they shove it down your throat obnoxiously, intrusively, force it upon you without asking you if you want it. And it goes with this big nose, hawk nose, Zionist, scumbag, Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook. It goes with everything. Microsoft, Verizon, all of corporate America is doing this. It, they, it's like they have deep down they really have contempt for the customer they don't really care mm -hmm. about what you think or if you're happy or, or if you, you know and you know they but they put on this facade that they care so much about mm -hmm. what the consumer th says and yeah. thinks and feels no they don't because if they cared they would ask permission before trying to force something on you they wouldn't do the things they do if they cared about the consumer and this okay. is the, the, and and this is why and this comes with uh, voting, electing right wing politicians, corporatist politicians, um, who are corporate whores, uh, uh, um, and uh, and and ill gotten gain is 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 okay in their eyes. We're having a primary. That's that's true. Primary is coming up on June sixth. Mm -hmm. That I, I guess that's a Tuesday. Uh, eight, four, five. Yes. They didn't. Five, you know five. the ba the sample ballot didn't even mention the date of the of the election. One, wait, wait. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. yeah it's usually on Tuesday. June sixth. Don't forget, people, Americans. The vote's very important. Don't complain. You have no right to complain and, 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 <laughs> and bitch and moan on, on social media if you do not vote. If you vote, then you have a right to complain. Otherwise, shut the hell up. Hey, hey. Yeah, it's true. If you, don't, if you don't get off your fucking lazy ass and vote, then don't complain on, on social media. Uh, now, um, so that's it. Uh, Microsoft chisels all the shame, intrusive, obnoxious. Uh, but then again, it's a it's a trend that is part of corporate America. is very much a part of it. Um, and um, yeah, that 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 sums it up. That sums it up. Um, all right, let us sink our teeth into these readings. Because, I mean, there's a hell, a hell of a lot to complain about these days. I mean, especially with the Trump administration and um, <coughs> how um, Donald Trump and his, um, and Paul Ryan and, and uh, the rest of the, uh, right-wing demons feel that uh, mainstream America really doesn't have a right to anything only on, only the uh, the rich yeah. the, the very rich yeah. you have a right to nothing oh. yeah. only to shop yeah but you can't shop if you ain't got any money they, oh yeah they don't think long term do they no oh. Hillary Clinton warned of the dangers of creeping authoritarianism. Creeping is right. Including an all-out assault on truth, mind control, and alternative facts. And even dropped the word impeachment in her most scorching critique of President Donald Trump's administration since he took office. Oh, he's uh, he's still he his invest the investigation of Donald Trump is not over with. Did you see uh, Donald Trump push the uh, ambassador? Uh, oh, I did. I forgot where he's. 
he pushed the ambassador out of his way so he could get in the front where they're taking the picture. Is that the NATO? Yeah. NATO, but yeah, all all of them were together there, and he pushed the one guy out of out of his way because he, so he could stick his own nose into the get in the front row photo op for the photo op. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the article. That that that's probably why the article says Trump bullies NATO. Uh, well, no, he bullied about them paying their share. They're, the most of them don't pay their share. That is true. But the point of it is, there was a photo op going on. With all these, you know, ambassadors and everything together, and he comes from behind, and he pushes this one gray-haired ambassador out of his way, so he can get in the front of the line, so he can get in the picture. I mean, that is that is pure Donald Trump. That's that's colossal goal, as they say. Yeah. That is, uh, he's got, he's got. Uh, he, he's got quite a pair of hairy cojones uh, 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 and uh, this is what happens when you uh, spoil and coddle a child giving them everything they want um, and like you said his mother treated him like a king yeah and um, they feel that they are uh, entitled Entitled to everything and entitled for you to kowtow to them right. and, and they must have their way otherwise they take a tantrum as you said with uh, Comey uh, Can you can you uh, Can you be loyal to me? What is See, he what is the loyalty uh, over country? Loyalty over party to him to him not to the Constitution of the United States of America like like Edward Snowden was, but to Donald Trump, like he was a a like he was a a, a don a mafia don yes, a exactly. mafioso don exactly. Are you willing to uh, sacrifice your life for yeah. me? How loyal are you to me? Yeah. So it's not about the United States of America. It's Dude. about Donald Trump. Yeah. Uh, so it's 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 um. It's about his ego. It's about him. It's all about him. Yeah. Clinton, who was the keynote speaker during a commencement address at Wellesley College, her alma mater, urged graduating students not to feel powerless and to speak out and encourage open and fact-based debate. I heard she had a coughing fit. Which is necessary for democracy to survive. No, I heard that months ago. Another coughing fit. Uh, that I never heard of. I heard them uh, yeah. right wing put it put that out months ago. Listen, listen. Whether it be Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump or any of the Republicans or or blue dog Democrats, if you're establishment politician, you should be. You deserve all the investigation that's uh, pointed at you, hey. and 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 uh, no one, and I repeat, no one should be above the law. Oh, I heard uh, Bill De Blasio's uh, one of his staff members got arrested for for child pornography or something, or pet some kind of pedophilia charges. Yeah, they found a whole bunch of uh, New York City mayor pictures Bill, on his computer. Bill De Blasio. Oh, really? Yeah. Worse, worse than Anthony Weiner's photos, because it. Well, well, yeah, yeah, they were worse. I mean, it's Same one. Crap. It's one thing to have intent and chat with a minor, but it's another thing to actually <laughs> do something with a minor. All right, continue. The speech took numerous, numerous swipes at the state of government, politics, civil discourse in the Trump era, including a recently released Republican budget that included steep cuts to social safety net programs, benefiting the poor, the elderly, and the disabled. Oh, I gotta give those tax cuts to their rich buddies. Clinton said the budget represents unimaginable cruelty. Yes, I and agree. And is a con because it uses accounting gimmicks. Speaking to the audience at the private women's college, she
she urged the young women not to give up. It's often during the darkest times when you can do the most good, Clinton said. Donald Trump is kowtowing to the people who voted for him, who elected him. And um, But they are the same people getting those entitlements. Oh yeah, the, the people that don't <laughs> the people that don't have a pot to piss in, exactly. And all them that are uh, living out beyond the uh, uh, phony cultist counterfeit Bible Belt states, the red states, the people that do not have a pot to piss in, the zealot evangelicals, mm -hmm. cultists that don't have a pot to piss in, and uh, they vote for people that do not work for the poor and the middle class, only the rich. Mm -hmm. And they re-elect them. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about Mitch McConnell, you know, in Kentucky, Kentucky people living in shacks, yeah. voting for a Republican. And uh, uh, they, they told, Ber Bernie Sanders did uh, a little mini rally one time in 2016 in, in someone's home in Louisiana. And, um, he wanted to really be close to the salt of the earth people. Well, these salt of the earth people said the reason why people down south are voting for Republicans is because our fathers and grandfathers and blah blah blah. blah that, that's not true. The republic, the Republican scumbags of today were the Dixiecrats of the past. You just have to... Yeah, well, uh, the Dixiecrats were the Democrats, too. They, like George Wallace. Yeah, they were all. It, so it's not, it's, not, it's not the political party. It's the way of thinking. Well, if you're a racist and a bigot, and you don't like anybody who's different than you, and uh, every problem you have, you blame on people of color... Well, the number one problem... Then, you know for the Republican Party of today yeah. can be traced back to slavery. Yeah, okay. well isn't it funny how the, the Amish of the North did not keep slaves, but our founding fathers had slaves, and the southern crackers that owned the plantations of course had slaves, and that were abused terribly. Uh, because that was the economy that we participated in. Lazy crackers, yeah. yeah. At that particular time. Yeah. But, um, uh, oh, by the way, besides not having slaves and being mm -hmm. hard workers who worked their own farms, the Amish also did not go around proselytizing, trying to convert people. They yeah. kept their religion to themselves, to their, within their own community. Mm -hmm. Their own culture, so that's two kudos that I ha that I have to give to the Amish. You can oh. give three kudos to the Amish about their food, their pies. Oh, the 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 ability to produce their own food on their own land. Good food. Good organic food, yeah, healthy that. food. Good food. Not not GMO uh, uh, garbage. Yeah. Inorganic gar. I mean, organic, non-GMO. Mm -hmm. What do they call the original seed? Heirloom, right? Heirloom. Heirloom seeds. The original seeds. Yeah. yeah. My boyfriend and I have been together for two years. Oh. He has a beautiful daughter whom I have a great relationship with. He and I are 12 years apart. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. And at times, I second-guess second his maturity. He moved in with me about eight months ago. I know he loves me, and I love him dearly. Dearly. However, his temper can make me second-guess everything too easily. Well, maybe hey, it takes two to dance the tango, man. Maybe she she pisses him off, you know. You only get one side of the story. He likes to go out with friends about three times a week. When he comes home, I tend to get nervous and begin questioning what I might have done wrong to upset him. Oh, uh, three times a week is a lot, huh? 
It can be anything from not blow drying my hair to leaving a piece of his mayo on his side of the bed. What the hell is he doing that for? I understand some men like their women to do things for them. And I want to do things for him, but that piece of mail turns into a pile of garbage in his eyes. Oh, he's one of those. He's a, he's a slob. Because it starts an argument about why I am so lazy. She's lazy? So she, he wants her to pick up after his disorderliness, his uh, slobbery. If there's such a word. He claims I don't do anything for him or think of anyone but myself. Then he begins to express that's why I'm so overweight and he body shames me in every way a man can. Maybe that's why he goes out three times a week. Hey, this is a problem I notice with uh, monogamy and serious relationships in terms of a woman. Now, some people have yelled at me and say, said that men get that way too. They get the beer belly, whatever. But look, when you're too, look, they get, they get too comfortable when they get married. Almost yeah. every female, except for the dedicated athletic women that work out. I gotta salute you, you women, God bless you. Most women get fat after they find a significant other and have a committed monogamous relationship or get married, they all get fat. Even Rachel Ray got fat uh, after she got hitched. After she landed a husband, hook, yeah. line, and sinker. That's what they do. They get too comfortable. Oh no, you got it's it's hard it's harder to to maintain a monogamous relationship than it is to play the field. It, it's harder work because you got to keep the person focused on the one individual only. You got to look good. You got to work hard at looking good, looking great, doing the right things. I will take the bait occasionally and speak up for myself. S stimulus, you know. But his anger takes over, and he's never wrong. See, it's, all, it's this is a one-sided opinion. See, because his side is not involved here. Other times, I simply stay quiet, and he goes on and on and on. Now, if if this uh, Amy Dickinson or or Ab the Abby, Amy Dick, if Amy Dickinson. Uh, sides with her then you know it's it's a gender thing I love this man and I try so hard to sleep these things off but I find myself becoming an angry person being around him while he is upset I know I'm not naturally an angry person so there has to be something we can do to keep this from happening all the time. Can you help me? Amy's answer. Mm. What you call possible immaturity, I call abusive. See, she's siding with her as a gender thing. Because she's, she's taking one side of the story, not looking at the fact that the woman put on all this weight, the guy's going out with his friends. All right, fin finish this article. The behavior you report, going out by himself several times a week, returning home and putting you in so that you are constantly worried about tiny infractions, these are all alarming actions of a relationship that is imbalanced and abusive. There is nothing you can do to change this dynamic unless your partner commits to change. And the guy you describe in your question does not sound inclined to change. He holds the power and he will not readily relinquish it. The best path for you is the path that leads you out 
of this unhealthy relationship. If you need more encouragement, please seek out family and friends who can help you to look at this risky relationship in an objective way. Don't let this person isolate you. Amy Dickinson, listen. You don't you don't understand how the male species um, um, functions or operates mentally, physically, hormonally. Men are very uh, visual. Uh, um, uh, women mostly go by what they hear rather than what they see. What they uh, what they hear uh, 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 rivals what they see. Men are more visual. If he dated this one female at the time, if she was slim or, or, or normal, average uh, physical size, and then all of a sudden after they moved in together, she started getting fat. Yes, fat. If she put on weight and became fat, then this is the reason why he's going out more often. Uh, and uh, when he comes home, he brings up her weight. Amy Dickinson is not noticing this combination, this pattern between him putting down her weight and going out three times a week with his, with his friends. She's not noticing this because she's seeing it through the eyes of a female. This is why you see so many beautiful women with uh, a freaky, look, funny looking, ugly guys. Ah. That's true. It's like, um, well, a lot of it has to do with uh, money, which is really just glorified prostitution. If a woman is dating some funny looking, uh, uh, scrawny, little, little, uh, funny looking little uh, worm uh, for, because of uh, his income, that, that is prostitution whether you like it or not. But, um, you know, women are, 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 are care more about what they hear. Men care more about what they see. And evidently, this woman might not have been overweight when they first started dating. But Amy Dickinson, it's just like, it's just like, like the feminists who just had to vote for Hillary Clinton. Um, it, it's a biased agenda. Let's put it that way. All right, continue. A self-described Trump supporter complains, For decades, the federal government has been run by lobbyists, special interests, and career politicians. No shit unresponsive to the needs and desires of the rest of us. Absolutely. I agree so far. We can agree about the lobbyists and special interest groups, but at the same time it has to be pointed out that President Trump has stocked many federal agencies with the lobbyists who have their respective industries not us in mind. What about cutting social services for the poor? You don't, you don't see that? There has even been a suit filed against the agricultural, commerce, energy, health and human services, interior, treasury and veterans affairs departments and the Environmental Protection Agency for failure to disclose just how many lobbyists have been granted waivers to take government jobs. As for the low unemployment rate, credit goes to Obama. As for the stock market's highs in anticipation of rule robot, rollbacks, the euphoria appears to be wearing off. When it comes to the current administration, the jury is still out. Obama reducing um, unemployment, that but the but the figure doesn't count the people who have given up, who are no, probably it collecting SSI. You know no, that, it that, that and and what about uh, that's like uh, 
That's like people saying, well, Bill Clinton created a lot of jobs. Yeah, I remember. I was around back then. There were hamburger flipping jobs. 22 million, yeah. Big deal. You can't make ends meet working for a fast food establishment. No. It's like it's like when they when they offer you programs, social service programs and welfare. It doesn't solve the problem. Exactly. It, it never gets you out of the trap. It's inefficient. It's like it's like the way um, the banks or the credit card companies have you in this uh, this loop, this uh, revolving door, where you you end up being so deep in debt that you can only afford to pay the interest on your debt, and the debt never goes away unless you send a cease and desist letter which a lot of people don't know you can do. And then the, the bill collectors stop contacting you. And uh, what happens is the uh, credit card company eventually gives up and sends you a letter that we are no longer pursuing the amount that you owe us. Yeah, because they write it off. And because they write it off. Yeah. And meanwhile, they, the, the bill collectors that call you try to make you feel very guilty. They try all kinds of psychological ways to make you feel bad because you're not paying off your debt with interest but many people don't know this just like many welfare recipients don't know that there's something called dollar a day auto insurance if you have a medicaid if you have medicaid or you're collecting any social services the, the fucking caseworkers don't tell you about this no i had i i found out that this existed by accident through word of mouth, through a friend. That I never knew it existed. And also, uh, young lady called uh, j gentleman a senior on uh, home care. Home care. Home care. And she said, uh, you can no longer get home care because of your life insurances. No, they want you to be flat broke. Exactly. They want you to... Hey, Dead broke. Hey, Medicare won't pay... For, when my grandfather was alive, Medicare won't pay for his nursing home until they sold his, the house, his house, and liquidated the money they got from the house. Yeah. You got to be flat broke. The same thing with, with welfare. You you can't you can't uh, apply for all these all the, the benefits available for low-income people unless you're broke so so this gentleman couldn't get the uh, the um, um, they threatened to uh, remove his caregiver services uh, 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 until he liquidated his life insurance policy right. because they felt that life insurance had monetary value it's counted as income it was an asset it was Right, just like stocks and bonds, mm -hmm. and whatever. Yeah, he had to, he has he has to liquidate it and uh, literally be uh, pathetically up Shit's Creek uh, before he can apply for the whole yeah. gamut yeah. Yeah. of whole social services. Yeah, the whole the, the the whole the full Monty. Yeah. Meanwhile, they're giving in the full Monty right up to poop shoe. I have supported President Trump ever since he came down the escalator in Trump Tower with Melania to announce his candidacy. I don't honestly. I don't think he expected to win. I think it was like like something exciting to do, like a publicity stunt. My support has not wavered as I see all of the positive things he has done for America. What? Oh yeah. Oh, by the way, I liked the way he was bowing to the king of Saudi Arabia. You know, you know that Saudi Arabia is most likely a big business partner with the United States. 110 billion dollars for military equipment. Yeah. Lovely, huh? Yeah. So give, give millions every day to Net Netanyahu. Give uh, billions to uh, a regime that uh, 
cuts treat. off heads and arms and fingers and legs. Yeah, that beheads people at the drop of a hat and does not treat women well at all. Women can't drive. Women, women have less rights than the family dog. Uh huh. Oh yeah, keep on. But, uh, but, but, but oh, you know what? I see. I I, I smell money. <laughs> uh, like Jesse Ventura says, follow the uh, the money trail. Is that what he says? Yes. Follow the money trail. With the with the uh, capitalists. Namely, reducing the attempted border crossings by close to 70%. Reviving the coal industry. Greenlighting the Keystone and Dakota pipeline. Yeah. Oh yeah, Republicans love that clean coal. Putting the sanctuary cities on notice. Deporting MS-13 gang members. Gaining the respect of world leaders, fighting terror, strengthening the military, and renegotiating bad trade deals. Just to name a few. Yeah. Oh, by the way, how could walls work if, uh, if um, the criminal element tunnels <laughs> into the United States? I feel much more optimistic and secure with Donald Trump in the White House. Really? We finally have a president who will stand up to the left-wing media. The left-wing media, the mythical left-wing media, really. And academia and Hollywood. Oh yeah, they're all yeah, they're all, every everything it's all left-wing, yeah, right. And this is one of the many reasons he got elected. It's oligarch control. It's not left wing. Right. Until this gentleman ends up uh, scraping the bottom of the barrel and destitute and needs social programs and then then watch how he changes his tune. Yeah. I really think that a short history lesson concerning President Barack Obama and President Trump is in order. I do not refer to him, Trump, as my president because I don't believe he acts as a president. A diplomat he is not. He does not represent me, my upbringing, or the things I was taught as a child that were not proper. During Obama's time in the White House, Trump perpetrated the false statement that Obama couldn't hold the office of the presidency because he was not born in his country. Obama represents all those things that Trump lacks in his personality and life. So it is no surprise that Trump is trying to eradicate Obama's record. As a result, our country is now suffering. Trump feels that it's okay to dismiss the Affordable Care Act because he can do better and give Americans more. Where? 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 Where's the replacement for the Affordable Care Act? I don't know. They've had about seven or eight years to death? do it, and it's death. still haven't done it. It's 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 the way things were before FDR. It's it, it's 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 uh. It's the dirt sleep. It's, it's death. He also thinks it's okay to do away with the Environmental Protection Agency so we can all breathe contaminated air and drink contaminated water. When he introduced himself as a presidential candidate, Trump told us enough about himself. Along the way, we learned that he was a liar, a cheat, a womanizer, among other things. So, when people start coughing about the air they are breathing and the water they are drinking tastes awful, we will know exactly whom to blame. Well, tr Donald Trump's uh, true personality and character, uh, I think, came out sufficiently uh, during the 2016 uh, campaign.
Absolutely. I mean, it was obvious. It was a, it bit you right on the end of the nose. It, it, it was so obvious. But uh, people got caught up in in the um, the emotion of the of what Donald Trump was saying at the rallies because Donald Trump um, <coughs> um, did, had an um, What's, what's the word my grandfather used to use about Republicans? Reactionary? Mm -hmm. Reactionary uh, attitude mm -hmm. towards fixing America's problems? Because they don't believe that the 98% are Americans. Their, their problems Elitism. that they fix are for the 2%. Yeah, they're, they're or the twenty percent. They're elite, elitists, isn't right? It? And and that and that's where America, uh, this so-called American exceptionalism, comes from. Yeah, that it, it's not about the the ninety-eight percent. No, never is. You know, uh, that's why we have the stupid electoral college and the super delegates, and um, you know, it's. Um, it's well, ridiculous. we had the electoral college before before we had Republicans. Don't forget the Republican Party is a very young party. 1851, uh, I believe. Well, the trouble started with with the Industrial Revolution, as uh, far as uh, politicians being in bed with the oligarchy. J.P. Morgan, Carnegie, Rockefeller. Uh, yeah, because they've always been told and they believe that. What, whatever is good for business, that is General Motors, is good for America. Well, if you have, if you're a CEO like Henry Ford, who who had the right way of thinking, and uh, and you keep the jobs in the United States, and all that might happen. Maybe, and tr uh, 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 tr the reason why trickle down never happened is because they didn't trickle anything down. I mean, uh, if it's what, what, what's the term they use for an employee-owned company? There's a term for it. Employee-owned. Employee-owned. <laughs> yeah. oh. okay. uh, and the and the Spain, Spain calls it something uh, which I can't remember right now. They have a lot of them over there. I mean, similar to what we're talking about? Yeah, the employees own the company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you don't have the uh, the board of snooty elitist uh, directors, uh, the uh, blood-sucking parasite corporate executives that's if you su ever saw sucking the, up all the profits. If you ever saw the movie Tucker. Excellent movie. You see that he couldn't get his business started and get the car done the way he wanted it because when you start a company corporation or whatever you get all these people on your board of directors who you don't know who you don't care about who they don't care about you it's jobs for them it's republican jobs that's all it Did is you know that uh, like, like lobbyists when they get out of government, they become a lobbyist. Did you know? Did you know that uh, Nikola Tesla, uh, back in the day, took a very popular motor vehicle and converted it into something that we should all have today on the road, and uh, it worked like a charm, like everything else Nikola Tesla did, and uh, they didn't go for it. Of course, of course, they didn't go for it. They didn't. Go they didn't go for Tesla before he That's did right. that with the with the vehicle. They didn't go. They went with Thomas Edison. You know? Thomas Edison was a businessman. He yeah. wanted the bucks to flow in. And he's the guy Tesla that. Was. And he's the only guy that I heard about, and read about in school in those bullshit, waste of taxpayers' money history books that I had growing up. Not to mention all the bullshit I heard from my relatives, all, all the brainwashing 
Right. They were brainwashed. They were lemmings. They were see, see, um, one of the one of the people one of the types of people that I hate the most are the sickening sycophants. Mm. They are they are not independent, critical, free thinkers with an open mind. They're not. Oh, of course. Everything is they're they're conformists. They're, they're everything's in a box. Even God is in a box. Hey. If they grew up learning certain things, well, that's how it is. That's they, how it is. They, you know, thinking, they're not yeah. willing to listen to anyone else. No, no, no. You know, it's like uh, Martin. It's like uh, I'm sure there were people like that when Martin Luther came around to cha uh, to challenge the Catholic Church. Uh, why do you think he was excommunicated? <laughs> Please, you know. Does now, anyone really think? It's the last one before the Democrats lunch. from New Jersey would say anything positive about our president? Oh, here's here's a tr a, a Trumpanzee, I bet. <laughs> These losers, losers that Look. we call elected officials, would never agree with or praise our president. No matter what he does. Let me guess. I bet he voted for Chris Christie instead of Barbara Bono. You know, went, yeah, I bet he voted for Chris Christie. Yeah. Yeah. Yet they and every working resident of New Jersey will benefit from this president. Oh, really? Hmm? You haven't seen any sign of it yet? Years of free handouts by Here the we, last administration. <laughs> Here we go, handouts. Will start coming to an end. Oh, what about the, uh, the the rich and corporations getting free handouts in the billions? Uh, and hard-working Americans will benefit for years to come by President Trump's policies. Excuse me, I gotta do a little trump hand sign. It's time for the media and elected officials in Washington to shut up and stop trying to derail this president because the silent majority will yell loud and clear in future elections and all those losers will get voted out. This guy's worse than Archie Bunker was. Hey, didn't Chris Christie tell somebody to shut up and sit down at a, at a town hall meeting? Yeah. That's a Republican uh, response to someone giving their opinion that you don't want to hear. Democrats always default to the same broken record rhetoric. Yeah, right. Cuts yeah. to Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, more taxes on the middle class, and tax breaks to the wealthy. Because gullible Americans continue to swallow these claims hook, line, and sink. Yeah, and, and oh, and the Republicans are not lying to this, this moron. Well, this American is proud of President Trump and stands by him 100%. Ah, flag-waving piece of shit. Idiot. What an idiot. And until, until, like I said, until people like that hit rock bottom and find out that Republicans don't care about them at all. But handouts. If you're if you're poor or if you're a poor person, it's a handout. You're a mocher. Oh yeah. If you're um, or if you're if you're not a baby already in the womb, you're still a moocher. But but what about corporate corporate welfare? Oh, they never mention that, do they? Hypocrites! No. Hypocrites! No, the money they give corporations are to provide jobs and to provide good products for I bet, America. I bet that moron believes no. believes in the trickle-down economics lie. I bet that he actually thinks... No. They believe the poor and the middle class are getting more than the rich. Not trickle-down. Trickle-down is long, long gone. Well, in other words, they're scapegoating the poor. It's, it's warfare against the poor that the right wings for some reason but the money they're giving to the poor yeah. and to the middle class should be going to the rich 
That's yeah. what's wrong with the health care bill yeah. by the Republicans right now. Yeah. It's a tax cut bill. It sounds it sounds like the mythical welfare queen of the uh, of the uh, oh, the nineteen seventies and eighties the yeah. mythical welfare queen the welfare cheats it's always about them dollar welfare cheats that that are that are that are mooching off of our tax dollars well you know what you middle your middle class tax do tax dollars are um, most <laughs> likely going to the military industrial complex. And going down a hole because social services makes up only like two percent of the total budget so anyway anyway we're gonna go to lunch and yeah. we'll be back you will now see how to defeat a conservative Bible verses simply hit the pause button read and learn followed by promo and yet a sickening sycophants yeah. They are, I don't know, I, I, I haven't been able to psychoanalyze them and understand why they, what makes them lemmings, why they feel comfortable being lemmings, why do they feel comfortable being suck-ups, sycophants, followers, how come they can't think for themselves, I haven't figured Sometimes it out. Sometimes it's just uh, as simple as... Um, uh, Lack of brain cells. No, they uh, they are the opposite of you. But that and must they like it. that must m mean their brains are not as good as mine. It had, well, they're not examining it in that way. It's a matter of um, when you go to ball games, when you go to yeah. football games, when you go to soccer games. It's one team against another. Right. It's one town against another. It's one state against another. Competition. It's one competition. country and against another. And that's why they might a lot of Republicans might look like, think like that. But do you know do you notice how how Plus against you? Do you notice how damn intelligent progressives usually are compared to people who vote Republican and of Republicans. Of course, but that but the, that ain't going to help them. Well, the Republicans, especially they, down south. What Repu if they live down south? Republican politicians may sound dumb, but they're 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 crazy like a fox. They know what they're doing because their their pockets are getting stuffed. Yeah. So they're they they know they know exactly what they're doing, but they're they're catering to the morons that vote for them. Anyway, I know you don't want to come come out and say that some people are just downright born stupid and a waste of sperm. I know you don't want to say that, well, but that's, you don't want because that's part of it. But. Yeah, yeah. But you know, I mean, uh, I mean, I don't care. I have no affiliation. To uh, with parties, to parties, yeah. I'm, I'm about doing the right thing. Research, <coughs> proven facts, education, studying, you know, and just sticking to, to the facts, like like science, you know. But um, we're, all right, we'll see it when we come back from lunch.
Greetings. This is James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21 Hard Hitting Podcasts, Holistic Health Talk, and Progressive Discussions. I want to talk about the very foundation of our entire organization, the newsletter that was founded by my co-host and mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisman in 1977. And that newsletter is called Censored. Newsletter Censored is truth and news fighting censorship and conservative propaganda. We believe we are living in the end times and you need newsletters censored. Newsletters censored pr provides the kind of truth that most people are afraid to hear. Can you handle it? Newsletter censored is for the independent, critical, free thinker with an open mind. Besides the reading of censored, Newsletter Censored also has The God Project and How to Defeat a Conservative. There is nothing in the mainstream media or the press like Newsletter Censored. So simply go to www.newslettercensored.com and with your gift to support this work, Get your free annual subscription to the newsletter that started it all in 1977, Newsletter Censored. You need Newsletter Censored. That's www.newslettercensored.com. Greetings. This is James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21 Hard Hitting Podcasts, Holistic Health Talk, and Progressive Discussions. I want to talk about the very foundation of our entire organization, the newsletter that was founded by my co-host and mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisman in 1977. And that newsletter is called Censored. Newsletter Censored is truth and news fighting censorship and conservative propaganda. We believe we are living in the end times and you need Newsletter Censored. Newsletter Censored pr provides the kind of truth that most people are afraid to hear. Can you handle it? Newsletter Censored is for the independent, critical, free thinker with an open mind. Besides the reading of Censored, Newsletter Censored also has The God Project and How to Defeat a Conservative. There is nothing in the mainstream media or the press like Newsletter Censored. So simply go to www.newslettercensored.com and with your gift to support this work, Get your free annual subscription to the newsletter that started it all in 1977, Newsletter Censored. You need Newsletter Censored. That's www.newslettercensored.com. Okay, we're back. I hope you learned something with the uh, how to how to defeat a conservative Bible verses. Seven lucky bells for our Memorial Day weekend special show, 2017. You are watching Progressive Discussions, a grassroots revolution. Uh, talk show. I'm, I am here with my longtime co-host and mentor and the very founder of Newsletter Censored, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman, that disembodied uh, spiritual voice you hear in the background. <laughs> Hold on. I want to pay my respects to Brother Neptune. 
We're doing great, huh? So far, with the with the, the holiday special show. Yeah, yeah. Hey, it's a good thing I stocked up on those uh, black Angus uh, all beef frankfurters from Aldi's. It's a good thing I bought two big packages of them. Smoke kielbasa? I I'm, I ran out of. I gotta go get more. Hey, go to, go to Piast. I won't go back to the Golden Eagle. I'm not happy with the quality of the meat uh -huh. or the seasoning that they use. Piast is the place to go. Uh, we have the the next town over has a very large a Polish community, Garfield, New Jersey. President Donald Trump's budget chief delivered a spirited defense of the plans deep spending cuts. You almost sound like Maxwell Schmar there. Chief! But his agricultural secretary offered only a half-hearted endorsement of proposed reductions to farm subsidies and food stamps. A day after the budget's release, a handful of senior administration officials fanned out on Capitol Hill on Wednesday facing tough questions from Democrats opposed to the blueprint for the next fiscal year and Republicans skeptical about the administration's math. Education Secretary Betsy DeVos God. faced the grilling from Democrats over funding private schools with taxpayer money. Oh. Uh, hey. But that's what they want. Uh, they want all the they schools. They want to steal. They love to steal things that don't belong to them. The uh, right-wing establishment uh, conservative politicians. They love that. They love taking things that, that came from the poor middle class, the 99%. They love to confiscate everything and because their greed is an, an obsessive sickness or evil. Better yet, it's evil because the sickness means that, that um, uh, they will uh, receive sympathy and compassion and empathy. Uh, so forget about the word sickness. Evil means that they must be smited and punished. Punished first and then possibly smited. One House Budget Committee member, Representative Tom Cole, a Republican of Oklahoma, told White House Budget Director Mick Mulvaney that Trump's proposed cuts to medical research are penny wise and pound foolish, and then excused himself to preside over DeVos's testimony. Mulvaney defended Trump proposals to slash programs related to the environment, education, health care for the poor, and foreign aid. Hmm. The former Tea Party congressman told the Budget Committee that he went line by line through the federal budget and asked, can we justify this to the folks who are actually paying for it? Democrats charged that Trump's cuts would rip apart the social safety net. Representative, uh, Representative Pamela Jayapal, a Democrat of Washington, told Mulvaney that the proposed cuts to food stamps, payments to the disabled, and other programs are astonishing and frankly immoral. Yeah, and cruel beyond words. Representative Jan Schakowsky, Democrat of Illinois, cited Medicaid's extensive reach 
we are talking about half the births in the United States. 30 million children and half of all nursing home and long-term care nationwide for senior citizens and people with disabilities. Agriculture Secretary Sonny Perdue <laughs> Sonny Perdue <laughs> was lukewarm in defending Trump's budget <laughs> to Democrats and some Republicans who rejected proposed cuts to farm programs and food stamps. Many in agriculture oh, and rural America are likely to find little to celebrate within the budget request. Alabama Representative Robert Aderholt, Republican Chairman of the Appropriations Subcommittee that oversees agriculture spending. I just whacked a, a mosquito that drew blood. I didn't even feel it. What if it was a Zika one? I don't know. But I whacked it and, and uh, blood appeared. It's not supposed to be I, out, out I, at this time. I didn't even feel it. It's supposed to be out at dusk. Yeah, well. And gone. I guess, uh, I guess the mosquitoes are getting like uh, politicians and corporate CEOs are getting more brazen. Trump's budget would limit subsidies to farmers including a cut in government help for purchasing popular crop insurance policies. Purdue said the nation has a dilemma in how to right-size the budget, but acknowledged the concerns. I don't know that there are, your priorities are much different from my priorities for USDA, he told and at Aderholt, DeVos faced pointed questions on whether funding private schools with taxpayer money would condone discrimination against LGBT, special needs, and other students. Representative Catherine Clark, Democrat in Massachusetts, asked DeVos whether a private school can receive the voucher money even if it denies access to LB, LGBT students. DeVos answered that that was not the federal government's business but was for states and localities to decide. So that's back to uh, the old days when the uh, blacks had their own schools and whites had their own schools. Segregation? Segregation. Well, they want to undo everything that the Civil Rights Movement yeah. has accomplished. Uh, even even the, the, the women's movement uh, with uh, suffrage back in the day, women's rights. Well, the the first uh, fem the first win I don't want to say feminist, but the first women's rights. Uh, Susan B. Anthony. Protesters Suffragette. were yeah. involved in the woman's right to vote. Yep. Believe it or not, at one time a woman could not vote. That's correct. That was the beginning, but so so everything. Everything that uh, FDR, Frank, Franklin Delano Roosevelt Lyndon did, Johnson. everything that was that was done um, to benefit human rights and civil rights and uh, uh, um, labor laws and uh, everything to benefit the common folk, the poor and the middle class. The Republicans want to undo all that, and yeah. uh, they want to turn. United States into a corporate uh, fascist oligarch, um, and some might even want to turn it into a theocracy. You know, ah, you're dealing with those uh, zealot evangelical uh, counterfeit Christian cultists. You know, now I feel the itch and the burn of the, mos the mosquito. Now I feel it. 
it, 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 before I, it was silent. Uh oh. I felt nothing yet. A proposal to curtail the nation's food stamp program would pinch families struggling to pay for groceries and ripple through other areas of the economy, including supermarkets and discounters, as people shuffle their budgets. Donald Trump is proposing a 30% reduction in the federal budget for the program formerly known as the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, or SNAP. Oh yeah, well, you know, uh, poor people, uh, they don't have to eat, they can, uh, they can forage, you know, and, yeah. and graze like cattle, they can, they can eat weeds and grass, and, you know. His budget proposal met a chilly reception from lawmakers and is unlikely to be passed, as is. But it suggests increasing work requirements for SNAP recipients and says states should both share in the cost of the program and determine the level of benefits they provide. Yeah, so once that, yeah. that would lead to fewer people in the program or could reduce how much help they get. Of course, they never say anything about those jobs, <laughs> stealing jobs from. In, in, in normal people who are not on the SNAP program. Because that's what you're doing. If you have to work for your stipend, you're taking the job from someone else. Well, all those, all those uh, state and federal jobs would be no more uh, involving social services, of course there will be severe cuts in, uh, in those jobs because they, they pretty much want to shrink government down to uh, nothing but the military. No. They just want the military. What, I, what I'm talking about is... I don't understand what you're saying. If you want food stamps, right. you have to work if you're able-bodied. Thus yeah. you are taking a job from someone else who is not on food stamps. That, that means the availability of jobs will go down. Correct! And, and it's already very low. Correct! And uh, uh, if, you, uh, if, you're, if you're a graduated student, guess what? Uh, an H-1B imported uh, professional will most likely take your job. So therefore, you cannot find an adequate uh, full-time job to pay off your student loan because they feel Republicans feel that education is not a right you have to pay for it out of pocket everything is out of pocket which sucks it, this is why I am a democratic socialist paying out of pocket for everything sucks the big one anyway that would lead to fewer people in the program or could reduce how much help they get. Last year, more than 44 million people received an average of about $125 a month in SNAP benefits, totaling about $66.6 .6 billion. How any cuts would play out across businesses would depend on how people adjust to pay for food, how reliant a retailer is on SNAP spending, and other factors. Here's a look at what we know. Who uses SNAP? And where are they shopping? The, 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 where are they shopping? What a stupid questions. Who uses SNAP and where? Not you. The re Maybe they're shopping at bodegas. We don't know. They're shopping where there's, where there's food for sale. What difference does it make? SNAP households are already 
on extremely tight budgets to qualify a family of four to take home pay for the month cannot be more than $2,025. See, I'm glad you brought that up because to be qualified for a Medicaid card you cannot make more than a thousand dollars a month and uh, because they assume that if you uh, make a thousand dollars or more a month in income that you are um, uh, you can afford to uh, to pay for your own health care what a joke how preposterous how ridiculous that is while a two-person household can earn no more than one thousand three hundred and thirty five dollars. More than two hundred and sixty thousand locations are authorized to accept SNAP benefits and credits. Superstores such as Walmart, Target got fifty two percent of redemption. Supermarkets got 30%. Convenience stores got about 6%. According to the USDA, the rest was divided among other kinds of stores. Well, the, their prices are way too expensive to buy food at a convenience store. Well, what store. food can you buy at uh, Target? At a convenience store. Target now has a, um, um, a small but... Um, uh, they have a small department where they have food now. They're, okay. they're, they're trying to... <laughs> Be like Walmart or stop... Yeah, the they're trying to copy Walmart. They're yeah. trying to copy Walmart who, who, who uh, has just about everything except recreational and medical marijuana. They got just about everything. <laughs> the USDA doesn't specify how much is spent at specific retailers, but in 2013, Walmart told the Wall Street Journal that it gets 18% of total SNAP benefits, and that would have been $13.43 billion in 2012. What happened with previous cuts? And guess what, Walmart? A lot of your employees are probably receiving SNAP. Yes, they are. Since food is a fixed cost, retailers have said that people used money unintended for other purposes to pay for groceries after a recent pullback in the program. They are paying cash or on a credit card if they didn't have the food stamps and then they will give up on something else. Yeah, like paying the rent. <laughs> yeah, but it's difficult to pinpoint the impact of any one change on sales, which can be affected by weather and competitive pressure and other factors. Other benefit, after benefits that had been expanded during the recession were rolled back in 2013 Walmart blamed an 0.4% quarterly sales decline on the reduction. How SNAP cuts affect the larger economy? The government's overall SNAP spending declines when the economy improves and fewer people rely on the program. Dean said Cutting benefits when people's financial situations are not improving could mean they use money they otherwise would have spent on needs like clothing or medicine to make up for the gaps in their food budget. So there's still an impact to the overall economy, Mr. Dean said. Oh yeah, well it goes back to what we, we said many times, the more money you put into the pocket of the little guy, the, the more uh, stimulating, stimulated the economy becomes in the United States. 
And Bernie Sanders is absolutely correct when he says that in the United States, no one that is working a full time should be living in poverty. <laughs> exactly. <coughs> I am a grandmother. Yeah, well, not him, I mean, yeah. To two boys, ages one and three. My daughter, who is slightly overweight. Slightly? Yeah, that means she's obese. Feeds them foods high in sugar. Donuts, pancakes with syrup, muff d d muffins, and for breakfast. Obesity. She provides dessert after every meal. I have noticed that the boys are now requesting desserts, candy, etc. Often during the day and while eating a meal. There is obesity in my and my son-in-law's family. Is there anything I can say or do besides providing healthier choices when I am watching them? I watch them twice a week. You and your daughter are part-time partners in raising these young boys. And if you work together, you can establish good eating habits and patterns that will have a healthy impact on the whole family. With the family history of obesity or uh, that you relate, these children are vulnerable. You should be understanding. Respectful. It's a form of child abuse. And frank with your daughter. Concerning what you are seeing when the boys are with you. She might miss mistake being frank with her daughter by giving her frankfurters. Those are the levity bells, by the way. There are easy ways to reset eating habits with young <laughs> children. I told you I was frank with my kids. By offering them healthy snacks. Foods like hummus, yogurt, to dip and slurp. Food! No, don't slurp, please. And by having them help at <laughs> mealtime. Oh, man. It is never too early or too late to introduce healthier practices at home. But remember, Never criticize their mother's choices while the children are at your home. Uh, if the mother is guilty, if the parents are, let me tell you something, brother. If the parents are guilty, they should hear the truth, the real hard-hitting truth about how stupid and irresponsible they are or foolish. A book you should consider having in your kitchen is Raising a Healthy, Happy Eater, a Parent's Handbook, a Stage-by-Stage -stage Guide to Setting Your Child on the Path to Adventurous Eating by Dr. Namali Fernando and Melanie Patak. Yeah, Wasn't that a Klingon term? Patak! Like, sounds like a Klingon to me. Hey, when I was in school, we had a, a class that we had to take that was sort of connected to gym class. It was called Health or Hygiene. Yeah. Health. Now, why can't, being that children communicate quite often with their parents, telling them what they think and what they like, I think uh, healthy eating should be uh, uh, a course with a textbook, <coughs> with exams and quizzes, whatever, given in detail to teach young children about healthy eating, as well as a course in uh, uh, small-scale urban gardening, how to grow food. This is important, and they can go home and tell their parents Gee, look at my textbook. Guess what I learned today about food? Guess what I learned about the crap that you've been feeding me, Mommy? See? You see how it works? My teacher said this and that, and you know what? 
just like the the little league coach or the football coach uh, that tells the parents to butt out. Hey. I'm the I'm the coach. You know, the teacher has the right to do, reprimand the parents. I mean, some some parents think you know they. The fathers freak out if their kid is on the bench all the time. You know, maybe your kid sucks at playing ball. You know, you ever think of that? Same thing with everything else. Parents must be, their feet must be held to the fire. Just like our, our so-called political leaders' feet must be held to the fire. You dig? I am also a fan of the Berenstain Bears book. These fun, easy, and colorful books gently convey important value-based lessons to children and are perfect to share with a three-year-old. Your grandsons might enjoy the Berenstain Bears and too much junk food. Interesting. Well, obesity in children, child obesity, is a form of child abuse because it is the parent's responsibility to make sure that the child eats right. And yes, fat cells can be developed early on in a, in a child's life, unfortunately. And uh, there's nothing more sickening than seeing an entire family obese. And you could be sure that their family pet is also obese. Like the, the fat dog that is given uh, uh, too many table scraps, including carbs. Usually it's carbs. Yeah. Actually, the, the whole family is obese because of carbs. Yeah. Refined carbohydrates in excess. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, It seems what we have in the White House is a president who may be a traitor to the United States and the American people. Where are the Republicans to stop this action by Trump? Where's Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell? I think they're holding back on, on, on that because Trump is so easily swayed and influenced by the Republican Congress. I think they're, they're trying to get their agenda in first. Well, you can possibly. see that, can't you? You know what I mean? Like he's, the he agenda is there. He's yeah. not bucking heads with the Republican Congress. Yeah, he's, he ain't draining the swamp. No, no, he's playing ball with the scumbag demon Paul Ryan and turtle-headed Mitch McConnell. He's playing ball with the demons. Right. And uh, they like that. Yeah. So uh, that's why they're hanging on to whatever Trumpy, Trump, Trumpsty Dumpsy they have, Trumpy Dumpty they have right now. They're hanging on to that. Since when is revealing highly classified information to the Russian ambassador and foreign minister not a traitorous act? It is time for Republicans to act and remove Trump from office, bring him to trial, and if the jury finds him guilty, put him in jail for being a traitor to his country. Given Trump's time in office so far, it seems our country might not survive this administration. You know what? Um you're, very, you're absolutely right, and also, if, if any president had impeachable offenses, it's this one. It is ironic that President Trump fired FBI Director James Comey, the man who was probably responsible for Trump's being in the White House. Then he started doing... Comey's statement that the FBI was reopening its investigation into the email question just 11 days before Election Day and then 
retracting this two days before the voting you notice that yeah. confused too many undecided voters and threw the election to Trump now the question presented to the FBI is whether there was collusion between the Trump campaign and the Russians is it possible that the FBI is coming too close for comfort for the president. Well, that, 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 that has to... Yeah, well, that's the reason why he fired him. We have seen Trump's unwillingness to be open or his tax statement would be available to show where his income comes from. Well, he said he would reveal it. Maybe, maybe he just didn't say what century. For what year he would reveal it. The president boasted about his accomplishments within the first hundred days, which meant his appointment of one Supreme Court justice. Instead of negotiating and working with Democrats in Congress, yeah, right. the Republicans in the Senate simply changed the rules they did not like. That's not an accomplishment, but something that will bite the Republicans in Congress in the future. Mm -hmm. Let us hope that this administration will not prove to be the most corrupt in modern history. For most of us do believe in America and want what is best for it. No, not not the America that Republicans want. Maybe the America that, uh, let's say, a, a, a screwed over Bernie Sanders wants, uh, or an Elizabeth Warren, maybe, wants, but not what Republicans want. Wow, you see something strange? Is there a Sasquatch behind me? No, I'm looking, looking for the sign. Oh, I put it. I, I moved it over. I found yeah. some steel to adhere to the magnet. Cool. Or as my grandmother used to say, the maggot. Maggot. The magnet. Yeah, the magnet. No, no, I'm sorry. She called maggots magnets. That's right. Oh, boy. Well, you know, they, they lived in Hell's Kitchen, New York, you know, and they seen a lot of dead things with maggots coming out. No, they just, you know, they had their way of pronouncing words back then. Yeah, but why did they see all these maggots? Huh? Maybe, maybe it was uh, all the food by, yeah, the uh, by the curbside from the, that the restaurants put out. Would be. I know when I was in, when I, back in the day when my friends used to take me to Chinatown in New York City, I saw, I saw a lot of rotted food at the curb. Do you imagine having to pick up that? Yeah. For decades, the federal government has been run by lobbyists, special interests, Getting harpooned. career politicians, unresponsive to the needs and desires of the rest of us. It is disgusting with this that led to the election of Donald Trump as president. Starting election night, even before Trump took office, the stock market started climbing to all-time highs. Hmm. Removing regulations has led to renewed business optimism. Optimism, yeah, for, for the rich. And consumer confidence. If you're greedy. The unemployment rate is at a 10-year low. Consumer confidence with, with companies that, that are allowed to screw you over every chance they get? Yeah, right. You are right? Are you, are you okay? Yeah. Entrenched Washington is doing all they can to thwart Trump and may even succeed at driving him from office. If they do, we will be back 
to unresponsive government and job-killing regulations. Enemies of Trump, be careful what you wish for. You may just get it. Uh, 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 there's a reason why corporate regulations were invented. <laughs> because the corporations were more evil than they are now, back then. Exactly, because they had more power. There was no labor laws to protect people. They had child labor. They had, well, you know, we're talking about yep. before the regulations came about. Yep. Everything good that was ever created to help the poor and the middle class came from uh, a, a a progressive democratic party. Not not the Democrats. Uh, not the the neoliberal corrupt democrats of today, but Democrats of the past. The FDR and JFK and Truman Democrats. Now, I just want to say that uh, <coughs> as far as it's not really a Chisler's Hall of Shame, it's just something that upset me. I, I went to, um, I clicked like to um, the New Jersey uh, um, uh, representative uh, uh, Facebook page of uh, Our Revolution. It was Our Revolution, New Jersey. Okay. They have now, there's the main website, Our Revolution, and uh, Facebook page, and then there are, they, they've opened up, I guess you would call them chapters in different states. I went to the New Jersey Our Revolution page, and it seems like they were very much preoccupied with saving the Democratic Party, reforming the Democratic Party, changing the Democratic Party. They have an obsession with the Democratic Party, uh, where they should be actually more preoccupied with forming a new progressive people's party. La a progressive labor party and people's party not trying to save a party that rigged the 2016 primaries against the real winner of in my opinion the whole entire uh, presidential election Mr. Bernie Sanders but the thing of it is you know what I mean the Democratic Party already absorbed all of that See, they you absorbed, like you like the Democratic they Party. You have this populism. They absorb no, progressivism. No, pop, what? They absorb where? 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 Where's the populism? To kill it. Where? To kill it. To kill it. So it would not compete with them. Not thriving. Not, not allowing it to thrive. That's what I just said. Our revolution. They did that. Bert. What do you think? What do you think big corporations do when another corporation comes along and wants to compete with them? They absorb it. Well, all I got to say is there's plenty of, of live stream videos coming from our revolution with Bernie Sanders and Jeff Weaver, and uh, uh, there's a lot of progressive politicians that have won elections all over the country on a state level that are disciples but of our what? revolution. What? If you got the Republicans and the Democrats. And now a progressive people's party competing with each other. Now you got a three-party system. Well, that's good. You have more options. Maybe. More options. Maybe. Well, no, I'm saying, it, I, I went to the page and I saw all these individuals. One of them is in New York, uh, one New York state, in different states. Disciples, products of the progressive grassroots, our revolution, Bernie Sanders, Jeff Weaver, all these people were elected on a state level and they showed the banners and the photos of these people that were being elected. But I'm saying, there, there is a, we've already been there and done that. It didn't work. No, it's, it's, The Democrats absorbed it all. But it's stronger now than before. It will be stronger because more common folk are getting more angry at our system and our political leaders it's a chance well let's you it's know what I, I have no i have no loyalty and even if it were happening i have no law you think you think fdr is still around 
what if it what if it happened and you got the three parties now how do you bring along the democrats you're not going to bring along the republicans okay the democrats so how do the progressives bring along democrats the democrats that are loyal to the democratic party are stupid assholes that's right. it right Plain and simple so now what have you done you got two you got two parties now you got to fight the Republicans and the Democrats. The Dem if the Democrats are establishment and corrupt, uh, uh, it, 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 look, you're always going to have corrupt establishment politicians to run against if you're a progressive. I'm talking about true progressives that get their money, not from corporations, but from we the people. I'm talking about the grassroots revolution progressives. Many of them are all of a sudden winning elections on a state level small scale but it's a start we'll see what happens we'll see what happens small scale what are you going to do hillary's going to run again and you're going to vote for her come on hillary's days are over so those articles about her uh, wanting to come all back over. in 2020 uh, 2020 over. kaput right yeah well then some uh, some other uh, uh, blue dog establishment uh, demon crap will run then no bernie could come back again well, uh, he might die in office. Tulsi fucking Gabbard. Tulsi Gabbard of Hawaii. You ever hear her speeches? She's fantastic. Tulsi Gabbard, a congresswoman from the state of Hawaii. Not well known enough. No, she's only known uh, because she campaigned for Bernie in 2016. Yeah. But go. I've heard her. I've heard her talk. Well, there you go. She's buddy. a. She'll be a great first. Uh, first female president. Uh, uh, um, you know, there's others. Hildebrand in New York, but she's a Democrat. She's like Elizabeth Warren. She takes she takes corporate <laughs> donations. I, I, look, I don't trust do. anybody. I don't trust anybody who takes corporate donations. Period. Well, they all do. Well, not not grassroots revolution pro progressives. Bernie took them too. Huh? Bernie took them too. Where? When? Oh, back in the day. No. Well, not, in that day, yes. Well, not in 2016. To where he is today, yes, and in the... Oh, no, wait a minute, you rascal, you. Beelzebub is working he through took, you. Though. He took donations from average folk. Exactly, and he took corporate donations. i never seen any Even article about anybody. that. He took corporate donations? How come I never saw an article about Google that? Google it. Google it. You'll he took it. corporate... Well, how come that net was never exposed? On a large it wasn't that much. Well, that makes him a traitor scale. then. No, you. James Grassroots revolution. Listen, that means you owe them a favor. Correct. If, if you take money from. But a you can't get anywhere in politics. Ah, uh, you know what? That. You're waiting for Jesus to come back for the second coming. You know what? Damn. Goodbye. Man. Adios. Have have a healthy and safe Memorial Day weekend. Goodbye. We get the fuck out of here. That's it. You're waiting for you. You wait for the the old second coming, man. You wait for Christ to come back. You don't want to fix what what the system we have now. It, it, it's neo. Look, it's it's it ain't fixable. It's uh, that hippie, that politically it correct, uh, pacifist hippie attitude from 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 the Democrats of the past. It's that neoliberalism. You know, uh, fucking Jill Stein, Barney the Dinosaur, sing Kumbaya, don't criticize any any group of people, like like the bullshit Sash Boyle was talking about. You know, if you say something about Netanyahu in Israel, oh, you're anti-Semitic right away. If you say something about a feminist, oh, you're you're mis uh, misogynist. Uh, if you criticize a one gay person, oh, you're a homophobe. It's that pol p politically correct crap. Yeah, but I wasn't talking about that. What you're saying I'm is talking about how you get ahead in American politics, you're, and you're, that means money. Well, I got news from for you. the big boys and the big girls. Are you absolutely positive that in 2016 Bernie Sanders took money from a cor corporate donor? Not a corporate donor, several corporate donors. And the money, money from, came from big people. Well, then he owes, then he owes them favors. But so, he ain't in, so it doesn't matter. So, well, what makes him grassroots revolution then? It doesn't. Well, then there is no hope. <laughs> then exactly. you, then you might as well, it's about time you were learning. Then that. there's no hope. Then, then your only, your only option is the second coming of Christ. There is no hope. There's no hope. 
Well, why, when are you so why do I bother to click like to our revolution? You tell me. Why do I bother to join anything? I'm it's, wasting my time. You say, you say, Bernie. I'm telling you right now. You better be telling me the truth about Bernie Sanders uh, taking money from corporations. Because I'm not loyal to the Democratic Party. I, I don't, I don't care what happens to the Democratic Party. You can't be loyal to anyone. Where do you get this the, idea? The words the can that they're going to come from for the next he election. He ain't coming. <laughs> There's no hope. This guy is so negative. He ain't coming. I'm telling you. Negativity. All right. Okay. Goodbye. Now we had a we had a uh, we had a uh, guy who ran. So negative. We had a guy who ran who put his own money in, and that didn't work. Ross Perot? Trump! Oh, Trump. Well, he did put his own money in. That's true. Well, well there you go. It's the whole system. Then it's where, corrupt. Then where, it's disgusting. Then where are we going to get the progressive candidate from? We're not. Bernie Sanders. So Bernie Sanders is putting up a facade with our revolution. He tried his best. He's putting up a... No, he didn't yes, try his did. best. He tried his best. The cards were all against him. Those people that showed up at his rally didn't show up because of corporate donors. That, that didn't matter. It well, doesn't well matter. the system was rigged. The yes. system was rigged! But it's rigged from the top down. Oligarch rigged. It's rigged from the top down. That's why I, you're not going to change it. What you're going to do is going to enter into it. You see, you see, the the neo, see the the politically correct liberals. They don't believe in in revolution and killing, and ha starting a new civil war. No, they want to see kumbaya worked. like Jill Stein. You ever see Jill Stein? It hasn't worked. The hippie, the big smile. You know, she never stops smiling. It, it hasn't it's worked. It's sickening in any country. Pass pacifist revolution has it not works worked because you eliminate you eliminate the evil. You eliminate the. What the, did the French Revolution try to do? They got rid of the oligarchs. Yeah. And guess what happened? Corruption seeped in again. There is no hope for man. None. Well, uh, uh, well then die. We'll, we'll die. Start the death. What can I say? Yeah, there's no hope. No, hey, there's hope for hey, certain. Hey, uh, uh, certain Ray, people, Reagan man. told Gorbachev, tear down that wall. And then corruption seeped into uh, Russia, Soviet Union. There is only hope for individuals. The problem wasn't the wall. To do what they can do. But as far as countries and governments are concerned... So, so, so Tulsi Gabbard, Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, our revolution, they're all going to take... What you're saying is, and I'm, I am very, very suspicious about what you're saying. What you're saying is they're going to take money from the wealthy. From 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 the uh, the top one percent, they're going to take campaign money. So where is the pro where where are the progressive um, programs uh, going to come from? How are they going to become a reality? You sneak them in like Lyndon Baines Johnson did, How did he do JFK, that? FDR, etc. They snuck them in. They snuck them in. Well, listen. And you get the Democrats to go along with you. Listen, very few people showed up at Hillary Clinton's rallies compared to Bernie Sanders. I'm sure all the common folk that came to Bernie Sanders' rallies, okay, but well, you can't make they judgments didn't, they on didn't, that. They didn't know about the, the the rich give donating. You know, I mean, you're saying that yes, that's the did. only way. Yes, they did because that's the way that our government works. Well, Jesse Ventura didn't, didn't. It was on a low budget, and he won governor of, of Minnesota. Small scale, small scale. You can do that. You can use your own money. Well, they sure kept that hidden about Bernie Sanders taking money from corporations. Hey, if there's anybody out there that has any proof, email it to me, please. Email to you me. You think that? Um, What's her name? We just mentioned her. And and whatever cocksucker goes back to William Morrow, telling him that I get up and down too often. Go fuck yourself. Uh, now you made me forget. What's her name? The, uh, the, 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 the progressive, the white hair, the old lady. Her name just went out of my head. Are you talking about the former governor of Texas? No. White hair, old lady, progressive. Who? Who's that? <laughs> The budget, McGall, in the in the Senate. 
Oh, uh, um, 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 Bach, Boxster? In the Boxster? Senate. No, you just mentioned her name. She's got white hair and she's older? Progressive. Old lady? No, not, a, her. not Elizabeth Warren. Elizabeth Warren. She's not an old she lady. She also took money from corporations and the rich. Because she's a that, goddamn Democrat. No, be, exactly, because that's how you get in. Well, then you owe them favors. But so how so how progressive so how progressive could you be with your voters to a limited extent? Well, so what you're saying is Bernie, when Bernie kept on getting elected, re-elected as as senator of the state of Vermont, you're trying to say that he took money from the wealthy. Well, then how could he be real? Uh, that uh, how how progressive could Bernie Sanders be? That's the way it's done. That's the way it's done, and you're so willing to accept it. All right, no, no, no I, war, no war, no revolution. I, don't shoot nobody. Just accept it. No, I am so. I don't want a bullet in my head. Well, we're talking about. What happened to JFK? We're talking about legions, legions of Americans up in arms. Legions of Americans. They ain't there. We're not talking about a few. They ain't there. They didn't protect John F. Kennedy. They didn't protect you. You know, you just don't want a third party. You know what? I hope to God the third progressive party becomes a reality. I hope to God it does. It because, already was. Because you, you people, you, pe books. you politically correct people, you can't criticize gays, you can't criticize nobody. That Everybody, oh, you're a homophobe, oh, you're racist, you're the, you know, everything is like, that has nothing it's to do political correct. Look, Dave Coulter, my buddy, you're right. You're right. You see how the politically correct neoliberals are? You're right. They they are so afraid that, that, that they're, they're not liked by everyone and loved by everyone. Everybody's got to fucking have a big a fucking coo you're supposed uh, to be kumbaya army. Get you're that. You're supposed to be talking about progressives. Singing kumbaya. Not neoliberals. No, I believe in the truth. If if a lobbying group does something bad, so what you if you don't see the truth. You don't believe in secret societies. You don't believe well, of course not. You don't believe Israel is run by 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 part of the the world's oligarchy uh, 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 by any by by you don't believe secret societies. I don't care. I don't care. You say, oh, don't say nothing about Israel. Oh, oh the, I don't you're care. anti-Semitic. Don't say nothing. What does that have to do with me? Don't say nothing. Because you, you don't believe in putting down any group. No. What if the group what, is? I, I. What is it? Why? Why should I? Care what if the about group that? is guilty of something? That group in in Israel. Any group, any one lobbying group, any group, any group. Then you expose it. Like, but what does it do? To, I mean, what is that? Why it has to do? With why does it affect me? Because only politically correct, die-hard neoliberal Democrats do not want any opposition that would hurt the Democratic Party. But you're they not are talking obsessed about with the Democratic Party. I'm not talking about the Democratic Party. You want to say the Democratic I'm talking Party. To, no, I don't. I just told you it absorbed all those good things well, what? from so, the past. All right. Populism. All right. And, and the all right. What about all the rallies going on with stream fucking videos from our revolution? What about all those videos that are going on with our, our revolution is growing leaps and bounds? Good. Are, are, they, are they absorbing them? They will. Once they get too, too competitive, they will. You, you, don't, you, you believe that the oligarchy cannot be fought against. That's what it comes down to. No, it's money. It, 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 money cannot be fought against. You believe capitalism will never really leave the United States of That's America? That's correct. Never. Never. Ever. Unless, unless the the well, so let them destroy the planet. That's what they're doing. Well, that's what they will. They're going to destroy the Did planet. Did you ever see the pic the movie The Day After Tomorrow? You know the planet's dying. Did you see the movie The Day After Tomorrow? Yes. Where it, uh, the ice came down and covered the United States. I saw the that Western one. And I saw portion. the one where the uh, the uh, the poles uh, shifted and all the te te tectonic plates and, and and continents were sinking into the ocean, and blah blah blah. And except Africa, so how politically correct that was. Everything sunk into the sea except Africa. Okay, yeah, but there. But the point is, when you get into movies like that, which Hollywood. show Hollywood would show these problems and etc. What happens is 
the individuals are thrown on helping themselves. Well, technology. They can't depend on government. They can't depend on the, the oligarchs. They can't well, depend on. How are they going to help themselves? You tell me. They're I gonna, don't know, but in the movie they're they were. They're going to live like, like Cro Magnon uh, people in the, and movie, the They were in the New York Museum or. Uh, I know. Library. And the wolves escaped from the zoo and blah, blah, blah. And they were burning furniture and books to keep warm, etc. So they, they were the living point was, very primitive, crude lives to survive. And they were they were thrown on their there own. There was no technology. There was nothing. There was technology. It was regular people. People were trying to get into Mexico. I know. They were trying to migrate. Americans no. were asking Mexico. Mexico invited them in. Unlike Mr. Trump. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember the movie very well. I, right. I usually watch every doomsday apocalyptic movie, and uh, uh, what happens is uh, our stand, our our modern standard of living is no more. Correct. And Mother Nature takes over, and we become uh, a bunch of fucking uh, animals, a acorn chewing, uh, or Yule Gibbons nut gobbling. Uh, 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 country bumpkins. Animals. We are thrown yeah. back on our instincts. Well, I kind of like I kind of like shows like Ancient Aliens. I like technology. I like I like futuristic stuff. You right. like the humble life of the past. But what that's are your... the aliens doing for you today? Let me tell you something. What are they doing Roswell for you? Roswell was not a weather balloon, my no, friend. No, no, I'm not interested in, the, in changing no, the subject. No, no. Let me tell you. I'm saying. What are they doing for you today? See how advanced, if they were here, you see how advanced our society te technologically is becoming worldwide. You see no. how rapidly because you're not up on technology. You don't you, study it. One technology is dependent upon the one that preceded it. It, it could be medical science. You can't science. have a computer. It could be uh, without a typewriter. Okay. What do you mean, oh my you God? Have, you, oh. You're not keeping up on science. The, you know you know what we have now? It's incredible. Do you ever watch the programs? Do you ever watch the Science Channel? Do you ever watch these programs on TV? What does that do with what I just said? But we are rapidly advancing. And, Where? And a, a cataclysmic event would push us back into the Stone Age almost. And there are political events that do that every day. We're advanced. Blah, blah, blah. We're advanced as hell. We aren't advanced anywhere. Where are we advanced? Technologically and medical science and, 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 and or general science in generals. Kids are still dying from their leukemia. Okay? And from this, yeah, that, and the yeah, other. Yeah, but the mortality rate is a hell of a lot less than it what? was. And guess what? You're not going to get a cure. For cancer because of money. There is a cure. They don't want you to know money. it. Money. They don't want you to know the cure. Money. You ever hear of proton therapy? It destroys the cancer cell without radiation or chemo. You ever no, hear no. of that? Proton therapy is radiation. No, no, it no. It's a machine. It's a focus. It uses beam. radio waves, I think. It's, what the hell do you think X rays are? And and, and, and no, and, there, it's a machine that does not use radiation treatment or chemo. It destroys the cells without harming the surrounding area. Technology. It's a focus beam. That's all it is. As opposed to general this race. is radio You waves. know what? He's, he's like, you know, this in some ways, you know what it is? It's an older man syndrome. Bill Morrow, older William man. Eisenberg, they got to be kidding? right all the time. They got to have the last goddamn word and they have to be right all the time. You know what you're doing? All the time. You are denigrating teachers. How can you, if you were respect a teacher, and learn from a you teacher would embrace with high that technology. attitude? You would embrace high technology. I'm not learning anything. I don't. I don't want to learn about country bumpkin life. I'm talking we about. We gave you several things technology. to learn today. Do you know what's out there? Japan has created the first artificial intelligent robot that you can converse with. So what? It it, 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 it moves into other How science. It improves the the quality of life, the standard How? of living. Science improves. How does that improve the life of a person on SNAP? 
Oh, here we go again. Oh, kumbaya, hippie, ba ba da ba ba. You know, bleeding heart liberalism. Uh, Money else. Uh, here we go. In the Everything world. has to be about about uh, uh, improving um, life for those who need it. That's what well, it's all well, about. Well, if that's all you folk, if that's all you're focusing your attention on, technology that's would all. technology would never rapidly advance the way it's doing now. It would never ever advance. I don't know where you're thinking where the advancement is. There, there, there uh, ten years ago, where uh, medical science, forget it, we're way advanced now compared yeah, to 10, 20 years ago. Yeah, but you cured cancer. There is a cure. They don't want to let it out because cancer treatment because why? is big business. Thank you, but I just said that and you said, I ain't going to listen to you. You're an older man. Well, you know no, that. No, you, no, no, no. You no, know, no. you made a statement that, that cancer was not statement. cured yet. You said cancer was not cured yet. And will not be. It is cured. They don't want you to, they don't want you to know that. Because it's a business. Ay, 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 ay. Goodbye, no. goodbye. I gotta get out of here. How did you change? I gotta get the fuck out of here. He he's gotta be right.